Protests rage on in Tel Aviv, and earlier today, thousands of protesters took to the streets. They are demanding that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu agree on a ceasefire deal to bring the hostages home. Protesters blocked traffic outside the Kiria military building that's the headquarters for the Israel, Israel Defense Forces. Over the weekend, as you know, six hostages were executed by Hamas and their bodies were covered by the IDF. This is the third straight day protesters are taking to the streets. Former National Security Council advisor Rich Goldberg joins me. Good evening, sir. And for the life of me, I don't know how, I mean, President Biden says that Prime Minister Netanyahu is not doing enough. I don't know what else he would do because the evidence, 2014, there was a ceasefire, October 7th, Hamas violates it. They go in with cameras, they videotape themselves torching and killing people in front of their children or children in front of their parents. They do the most unthinkable things. They, they then stealing money and, and now they execute these people with shots to the back of their head. I don't know, what, what more can you do to negotiate? And they have a charter that says don't negotiate and, and destroy Israel. How do you, what is the deal that could be obtained? And what's the, and what's the proof that Hamas would ever agree with anything? Well, obviously, there's a lot of emotions running through Israelis uh, tonight, and you can understand why six uh, Israeli hostages executed. And Hamas is getting exactly what they intended to have happen. The United States putting pressure on Israel instead of Hamas and its sponsors. And, of course, the people of Israel already in a combustible domestic political environment taking to the streets like this. Uh, Hamas wants to see the chaos in the streets of Israel. They want to create this sort of psychological warfare in addition to the actual warfare they're conducting. That's the purpose of this. Now, what's the reality here? When you step back and you try to take a look at this from a policy, national security strategy perspective, you're right, Greta, this is an evil terrorist organization. It's like saying, what's the best deal we can cut with Osama bin Laden or with Baghdadi? We would never be thinking like that. You'd be just dedicated day and night to hunting down their leaders and destroying their infrastructure. That's what we should have been doing for 10 months. That's what we should be doing now. Yeah, but for the life, it means like I, you know, when you listen to the tape that we played this outside the show, is that Prime Minister Netanyahu went through all the instances in which he agreed to things, and and the and Hamas kept moving the goalpost, or they they wouldn't do it. And so now, if now with the six executed, they get something else. They keep getting rewarded, and they are absolutely animals. I've seen that 47-minute tape where they're bragging about killing people. I've seen them kill people. I saw them, you know, cut someone's head off slowly. I mean, it, Hamas is not. I mean, Hamas is the most evil or organization, how the Biden administration thinks that we can sort of cut some deal with them is beyond me. Well, listen, the bottom line is this. If you're Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas, somebody who orders the execution of hostages tied behind their backs, shot behind their head, uh, instead of allowing people to be free, who knowingly executes an American citizen, Hirsch, Poland Goldberg, th this name was everywhere in the news. His parents spoke at the DNC. There's no way Hamas didn't know who they were executing. In other words, to them, the American passport means nothing. And so the question then is, what do you need to do to create an environment mm -hmm. where Sinwar has to choose between his own death and giving back the hostages? That's the environment we need to be creating here, not, not anything that rewards him for what he just did. Well, the irony is that the attorney general is saying that uh, Hamas is, fu is financed by Iran, Hezbollah, and, and conveniently leaves out the, uh, the uh, UNRWA and the United Nations. It's beyond me. It's like the na naivete is running so thick through so many people's heads in the city. But anyway, Rich Goldberg, thank you, sir.